Hi hey everyone, I'm FM Greeno. Welcome along to episode 22 of the Greeno Tour. So this is the start of our first full season here in Budapest with Homved. We've got a lot to get through with all our summer business and what have you. So let's get straight into it. As you can see, pre-season has gone pretty well. No defeats whatsoever. Uh, most of our friendlies were against teams that I'd probably consider weaker opponents than us. Um, but there were some alright ones in there. And to come away with no defeats is always good. Builds a bit of confidence in the squad. We've also played the first round of our Europa Conference League. Uh, we entered in the first round of qualifying in that. So very, very early on. We had to travel to Radnitsky. Uh, well, first leg we beat them 1-0 at home second leg we went over there and got a 0-0 draw so that put us in the hat for the next round we got fairly tough opponents I think a bit of an unknown quantity but I'm expecting them to be decent fight our Jerusalem Israeli side obviously so that'll be an interesting matchup today we're going to have our first league game though we're going to be playing against Dioskur but before then we'd better have a look at the players that have come in and out of the club the transfer window in Hungary is a little bit different to a lot of countries. We start in, like I say, today is the first game of the season, but we've still got another five weeks of the transfer window to go. We've been trawling through looking for players to improve the squad. It's been a bit of a struggle so far, but the good news is we've kind of balanced the books in terms of our transfer business. So first of all, let's have a look at the players who've gone out. The ones for money, anyway. So Damian Oko is a centre-half. Didn't really play much for me last season. He's gone out to a team in Romania for 150 grand. Nasser Aliji, our Albanian left back, um, wasn't very, very happy with us for some reason or other. So we've let him go. We got best part of half a million pounds all told for him. Not bad. A few youngsters have gone. Uh, Mikulic, who was a backup goalkeeper, he's gone to Mezikovejt. And a youngster here, Dominic Sip, who I didn't think was ever going to make the grade for us. Uh, we have let him go to Budafok. Uh, they offered 100 grand with some extra incentives on top. So we just took the money. In terms of incomings, we have eight new players in the club in total. Let's start with the one I think is the most promising. This young centre-half, Robert Hulak. He's a 17-year-old Slovakian. We've paid some pretty big money for him, but just have a look at him as a 17-year-old. So his physicals are pretty good. His natural fitness is the one area that lets him down. That's a bit of a concern for me. Um, but his mentals, you look at his bravery, his anticipation, his teamwork, all really, really solid. And even his, uh, you know, technical attributes, the ones he needs as a centre-half, heading, marking, tackling, all solid. So I think this kid is going to be a real superstar for us. And, you know, if we can keep hold of him for two or three seasons, I think the big boys will be sniffing around him for sure. In terms of the other players that have come in, we've brought a young Croatian lad, Fran Petkovic. He's going to be pretty much a backup option up front. But again, plenty of potential in there, I think. Some very, very nice attributes. Lorenzo Libuti is going to be a maybe starting right back, maybe rotation. I'm yet, not yet decided, but I think, yeah, I think he looks solid. Um, it would be nice for him to have Pogliano alongside him, I'm sure, in defence. A little bit of an Italian link up there. Will Norris has come in as our backup goalkeeper to Asvani. Not expensive. We got him on a free. He's only on a couple of grand a week, and I think he's a really good solid backup option. This lad was intriguing. A 27-year-old Brazilian winger playing in Portugal. Um, he insisted he would only come if he was going to be made vice-captain. So we agreed to that, and he happily signed on the dotted line. So he's on just under four grand a week. We've got decent options now on both flanks, I think, with inverted wingers. We've got four options for the two slots. We've got, obviously, Ugray and Babati from last season. But KD there, and also this lad, Nasser Chamed who can play on the left-hand side, a Comoran international. He's probably going to be the rotation option out of the four, the one who's going to get less game time, but I still quite like the look of him. I think he's all right. Um, another sort of rotation backup option came in from Coventry, Dutch player Gustavo Hema. Quite like the look of him. Again, solid if unspectacular. And the last but not least, Raymond Molnar. So anyone who's been watching my Mighty Magyar save will be very familiar with this kid. Uh, he's in Benfica's youth team or B team for most of the save with uh, with my Hungarian national team. But I keep using him and he scores loads of goals for Hungary. 
So when the opportunity came up to sign him on loan from Benfica, I just snapped their hands off. Again, look at some of his attributes. His physicals are really solid. He could do it a bit more pace, but his acceleration of 15 is great. Anticipation 15 here, off the ball 15, technique 14, good heading, finishing on first touch, excellent. So I think Epal has really got a fight on his hands for that first team place this season. Over the course of the summer, we ended up with about £6 million in the bank, which was nice. Uh, sponsorships dropping in, a bit of prize money from last season, etc. So I decided it was a good time to approach the board with a few requests. Uh, they agreed to uh, some coaching badges for me and some of the rest of the staff, which was nice. Also, training facilities and youth facilities. So they're being upgraded as we speak. They're already good, three-star rated, which is pretty decent for Hungarian standards. So we'll be adding a little bit to them. They're going to be completed. I think the training facilities is the end of November. Youth facilities end of December. So certainly in time for the next youth intake. Positive moves all round. This is how we're lining up today. A couple of our new signings make the first 11. But let's run through it. Asvanyi remains our first choice goalkeeper. Chanyi Pogliano, new signing Hulak, the 17-year-old. And Mezgrani at right back today. Um... Unfortunately, Lorenzo Libuti has picked up a slight knock, so Mezgrani comes in and takes that place for today. Sankovic playing in the holding midfield role. Again, another injury. We'd probably be playing Dusan Lagator if he wasn't injured. Uh, Radetzky and Gazdag, who've got a nice link up in central midfield now. So there are two starters there. Babati starts on the right-hand side today. Like I say, he's got a bit of a, a fight on his hands with Young Kedi on the bench. Chamed is going to play on the left-hand side, the new signing. I just slightly prefer him to Ugray, I think, in today's game. Molnar does come in for Epel up front, um, which changes the way we play a little bit. Obviously, Epel has been playing as a target man or deep-lying forward, which he did really, really well for us last season and finished third in the goal-scoring charts. Molnar is, is... I like to use him as an advanced forward. So it changes the way we're playing a little bit. He's going to be using that pace, that anticipation. We're going to be passing into space a bit more to try and get him... In, in behind the centre halves, whereas with Epel we were just playing the ball into feet. So hopefully that should give us, a, you know, we should be a little bit more dynamic going forwards. I hope. Anyway, let's see how that works out. We are off to Mischkoltz, and we're going to be playing Dioskia. And we're underway. Molnar takes the kick off. We're playing in our black kit today. Hulak knocks a long ball up front. That's not the greatest ball. I hope that's not indicative of the way he wants to play. I think he should be a better player for us than that, for sure. I'm really interested to see how some of these uh, new signings are going to fit into the squad today. I think, for the most part, I mean, there's no real superstars. I think Hulak has a potential to be. Molnar the same. The rest of them are just sort of good journeymen professionals, I suppose. A couple with decent potential. Like I say, we've been uh, on the lookout for really, really strong talent. But, you know, the guys either want too much money, or their transfer fees are too high, or... They just don't want to come, <laughs> which is a bit of a problem. Oh, dear. Asvani has not covered himself in glory there, has he? Not the start of the season I was hoping for. A goal for Diostia. Ogliano with a fairly weak challenge on the edge of the box there. We allow this guy to get in and get the ball back to Markvart, who hits it from an angle, and Asvani beaten at his near post when he gets both hands on the ball disappointing i think we're going to uh demand more from the boys hopefully they can step their performance up a little bit like i say we've looked fairly good in pre-season we looked okay in that tie against rednitsky here's molnar oh brings a good shave shave good save even out of the uh dioskia goalkeeper gazdag to take the corner headed clear are we going to be able to recycle this and turn it into another opportunity Chanyi gets down the left. Chamed, can he get a ball over? No, runs out of play, unfortunately. But yeah, I'm fairly hopeful that we're going to have another decent season here. Obviously, having extra European games is going to be a bit more of a strain on the squad. Um, so we've had, we're still looking to add some bodies. But yeah, finding the quality that we want really is, is the problem. I don't want to just throw money around and, and get players who aren't really good enough. We've got an opportunity here, but we get the block in, and it's a counter-attack here for Dios Dieu. Hopefully we can get a challenge in. We can. 
End of highlight. Well, that wasn't a very exciting highlight, was it? So we've been playing pretty well so far. We're having the best of the chances. We've got a better XG than they have. Unfortunately, the one stat that really matters is the one in the top left-hand corner of the screen, which says they've scored and we haven't. The media are fairly confident that we're going to be a decent top table, uh, top half of the table side again. Oh, what a lovely goal that is! Wow, that was properly pretty football. Let's have another look at this again. So, Gazdag nods it down. Molnar to Radetzky. First touch football and a great first touch volley finish from Gazdag. That was beautiful. We'll have some more of that, thank you. Yeah, like I said, the media are fairly confident we're going to be a top half side. We are predicted to finish fourth in the table behind Ferenc Veros, uh, Fehavar, and Pushkas Academia. And then there's a, another group of teams like Mezakovic and Debrecen and whatever just behind us. We have one player in the Dream 11 who is our Italian centre half, Pogliano. So, yeah, it looks like we're set for a decent season, but we need to do a little bit better than we're doing today. So what are we going to do at half time? I think we're going to tell them that I'm not happy with the performance out there. Let's get them motivated. Let's get them fired up a little bit more for the second half. We'll give it 15 minutes or so. And if it's not working out, we'll think about what kind of changes we can make. We do, of course, now have the option, now that we've got uh, Molnar in and Eppel on the bench, that we could do a 4-4-2. That's something we didn't really have enough strength in depth for last season. Or the right combination of players, to be honest. So... Having a, a target man and someone like Molnar alongside him is definitely an option that we might have to use at times. So saying that, are we going to have to use it? We have just gone 2-1 up. Babati coming in as in, in his inverted winger role from the right-hand side. Look at this. Cuts inside his man, gives it to Gazdag, who finds him again. And in a very similar position to uh, the Dioskio goal, smashes it into the near post. Their keeper will probably be thinking he should do better too. Now, can we build on this? Good tackle there by Mezgrani. Up to Molnar. Beats his man. This is where he's dangerous. Well, not on that occasion though. What we've seen in the, certainly in the Hungary save that we got running. If you give him an opportunity to run at people or, you, or on the, the shoulder of the last defender, he's going to cause havoc. We've scored a third. The ball comes back off the post from a free kick. And Hulak is the first to react. Our 17-year-old Slovakian centre-half. That will do his confidence the world of good to score on his league debut. It's not exactly a classic, but we will take that all day long. Kick off highlight now. Hopefully this will come to nothing, but generally when there's a kickoff highlight, you know something interesting is going to happen. When we get there, Molnar does get there. Good lad. Gazdag finds Chamed out on the left-hand side. He's got Chan Yi supporting him there. There's Molnar. Oh, what a lovely effort. And that's exactly the kind of thing we've brought him in for. That we can get those balls around and in between the centre-halves uh, in those little channels, and he will get onto it and hopefully cause havoc. So there's an hour gone now. I think all we're going to do is keep an eye on people's... Uh, Fitness. Gazdag looks a little bit tired, so he's one that might come off. We do have our new Dutch signing on the bench who could come on and uh, replace him, so maybe let's do that. Let's have a little look at him. So Gazdag comes out and Gustavo Hamer comes on. We can slot into that exact same position fairly comfortably. So he's going to get about a 30 minute run out, which is good. Get some miles in his legs. Give Gazdag a rest. So we've been very, very dominant. Possession, we're only edging, but in terms of the XG, very good. Shots, shots on target. We're dominating all of those statistics currently. Good header clear by Hulak there, and here's Babati running at them. Molnar, there he is, getting in that little gap again. Good block, though. Oh, Sankovic, that's a nice effort, but straight at the goalkeeper. You can see the sort of havoc I'm expecting Molnar to cause this season. I think against Hungarian league defenders, this kid could be a real star for us. We're into the last 10 minutes. I think it's time to make a couple of changes now. We have got some players who are struggling. So who can we take out? 
But Bavati has got a slight injury, so we'll bring KD on for him. And Pogliano is struggling, so let's take take him out and bring uh, Botan Barat on for a few minutes. I think at 3-1 up, I'm comfortable enough to think about taking a centre-half off. It's not something I normally would like to do. But as the way the game is set, I think it's something we can afford to do. Saying that, though, here come uh, here come the Eskio. The changes haven't been made yet. Good block. Out for a corner. And we don't even get to see the corner. So that's nice. We're in the last knock-ins of the game now. Mesgrani here with a throw. KD beats his man. Cuts inside. Has a go. Ooh, unlucky. That was a nice direct bit of play by him, though. And so four minutes of stoppage time to go. Looks like they're just going to play out very comfortably. This probably is just going to be an end of game highlight, I would imagine. Molnar going for one last little effort. Gets blocked. Cleared away. Let's get a challenge in. Ball goes out for a throw in and that is full time. We have come from a goal behind to win 3-1. Well, that knock Babati took right at the end of the game is going to keep him out for three weeks, which is a little bit disappointing. But we do have that new signing, KD, who can come in and is a very adequate replacement on the right-hand side. Now, in terms of the schedule, uh, I think we're going to come back next for the Fehavar game. I just double-checked, and the transfer window in Hungary is open until the 26th of September. So this is the first game after the end of that window. So unless anything spectacular happens in the uh, European, European Conference League, Unless we pull out a big boy and we've got to play them around here sometime. I think it makes sense for us to come back at that game with a finalised squad. You can see who we've signed. And of course, it's a very, very big game. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. It was good to get the season off to a very, very convincing start. Hopefully more of the same to come. If you did enjoy it, please drop a like on there for me. And of course, if you've got any comments about this episode or the series as a whole so far, I would love to see them below. And yes, if you're not subscribed, you know what I'm going to say. Come and hop on the Greeno bus. There's plenty of room for you all. But it just remains for me to thank you for watching, and we'll see you soon for some more action with Homved. Bye for now.